Hello friends, my name is Eric Cloward and welcome to the Stoic Coffee Break. The Stoic Coffee Break is a weekly podcast where I take an aspect of Stoicism and do my best to break it down to its most important points and see how we can apply it in our daily lives. I do my best to share my successes and my failures and hopefully you'll be able to learn something from this all in the space of a coffee break. Today's episode is called How to Win an Argument. How do you win an argument? All of us have to deal with conflict in our lives, and to think otherwise is completely unrealistic. But when we have an argument, what is our goal? What do we hope to achieve when we're arguing? To change the other person's mind? Maybe to prove that we're right? Today I want to talk about why we argue and the best way to win an argument. Marcus Aurelius said, It is possible to curb your arrogance, to overcome pleasure and pain, to rise above your ambition, and to not be angry with stupid and ungrateful people. Yes, even to care for them. So first off, I want to discuss why people argue. If you ask most people, they would probably tell you that they really don't like to argue, and that they don't like conflict. But if this is the case, why do we have so many arguments as human? I mean, so much of what we read, see, and hear in our media, for example, is people arguing about what they see as the right way for things to be done or how somebody else is doing it wrong. So first I want to dive into the nature of conflict. So at its core, I think the main reason that we have so much conflict is that we each experience reality in a distinct and different way. Each person in the world has their own unique perspective on what reality is. This is a combination of lots of different factors, including their past experience, biological makeup, current state of mind, education, and general outlook on the world. Other factors also include the culture that they live in, the culture they grew up in, the language that they speak, the country they live in, and even their physical environment. Because of the large number of variables that go in to make up a person's perspective on reality, no two people are ever going to see the world in the same way. And there's bound to be conflict in any area of life as people interact with each other. The only way to completely avoid conflict with others is to completely avoid contact at all with any other person. So there's a few different areas I want to look at and what we see as as conflict that arises in these areas. So in religion, for example, people have usually settled on a set of beliefs that strongly influence what they believe about the world. Some believe that there is a gray-haired man in the sky who is watching over every action you take and knows every thought that you think and is judging you for each and every thought and action, and that when you die, that you will be punished for anything that you did wrong. Now, some claim that because of the thoughts and actions of others, bad things happen as a punishment from this God. Hurricanes, tornadoes, and earthquakes are all just manifestations of this God's wrath upon one part of humanity for the alleged sins thoughts, actions of another part of humanity. And this capricious nature of some higher power that would punish people for the sins of others is honestly one of the things that drove me away from religion. Now, when it comes to politics, for example, people's political views are strong enough for them to take actions that can be highly detrimental for those who are less fortunate, maybe have the wrong skin color, or speak a different language. We find people on opposite sides of the political spectrum holding wildly different ideas about how things should be run. And often we see people who will oppose an idea, not on its merits, but because the other side supports the idea. They may even believe that the idea is good, but they are completely unwilling to support it simply because their side didn't propose it. Now, there are some people who believe that there's a certain hierarchy of humans based upon factors such as education, family, class, money. And some believe that there is a ruling class and that there are others that simply are meant to be ruled. Some believe that others are born inferior based upon their family, their race, their sex, or gender identity, and therefore are lesser beings. This often leads them to act in ways that they feel that they have privileges to that they do not afford to others. When someone fundamentally believes that they have the right to control another person without their consent, there's definitely bound to be conflict. In our personal relationships, we often find most of our conflicts arise when we believe that the other person's ideas or actions are incorrect 
and we try to change them. When we feel like we have the right to coerce others to change their opinion or to change their actions, we're going to have issues when we try controlling something that we don't have control over. And while we might think because of our relationship with this other person that we have that right, and this happens frequently with romantic partners, we find that we disagree with our partners on something that maybe we find a little bit troubling. Maybe they have a point of view about something that we think is just illogical or frivolous. Even so, we don't have the right to coerce them through arguments or physical means into changing their minds simply because we disagree with them. Now, in the case of parenting, depending on the level of maturity, we have a duty to take care of our children. We need to take care of their physical needs, and we do our best to teach them how to manage in the world. But even though we're in charge of them, we do not have the right to force our children to change their opinions just to suit us. Our job as parents is to teach them how to form their own opinions and teach them the skills they need to survive in the world. And the less we focus on making sure that they have the right opinions and help them understand how to form their own opinions and apply critical thinking, the better off they'll be able to cope with the challenges of life. They may have less experience and may not have skills in many areas, but this does not mean that we have the right to violate their personal autonomy. For example, when you beat your kids or verbally abuse them, you're violating their person and trying to force them to conform to your will. And basically, you're trying to control something that you can't control. I mean, think about how many times your parents told you something and you just agreed with them simply to avoid an argument, even though you did not agree with them and you did not want to change your opinion. Beating your children as a punishment can cause trauma in your kids that is not easily remedied. And as the provider and protector of children, your children should not fear you, but should be able to lean on you to get their physical, mental, and emotional needs met so that they can learn how to navigate in this world. Marcus Aurelius said, As you move forward along the path of reason, people will stand in your way. They will never be able to keep you from doing what's sound, so don't let them knock out your goodwill for them. Keep a steady watch on both fronts, not only for well-based judgments and actions, but also for gentleness with some who would obstruct our path or create other difficulties. For getting angry is also a weakness, just as much as abandoning the task or surrendering under panic. For doing either is an equal desertion, the one by shrinking back and the other by estrangement from family and friends. So, how do we win an argument? First and foremost, we need to accept that we all have a different version of reality. Second, we need to recognize that we do not have the right to force anyone else to agree with us or believe in our version of reality. And third, we need to understand our goal for the argument. Are we trying to convince someone of the rightness of our position and the wrongness of theirs? I know that if someone is trying to push me over to their opinion, I almost automatically resist. If they aren't interested in why I hold the opinion I do, then it makes it really hard to want to listen to them and listen to what they have to say. It says right off the bat that they think I'm wrong and that they're setting out to prove it. And honestly, no one likes to feel this way. The other thing is, if you don't take the time to understand why a person believes what they do, you'll never be able to address the factors that cause them to believe it in the first place. Often, when you listen and try to understand why they hold their opinions, they may even discover the flaws in it, and you may also discover the flaws in your own thinking. So, I propose that the way that you win an argument is that the goal of any argument that you have should be that you act honorably, that upon reflection, you can feel good about your behavior. And for me, that includes not yelling or name-calling. It means listening to why the other person feels the way that they do. It means that I care that something bothered the other person. It does not mean that I have to do anything about it, but it does mean that I have to have concern that something bothers them. That's it. I don't have to agree with them, but I should care about them. If you're unwilling to be open to changing your opinions, why should you expect someone else to be willing? Remember, the only thing that you can control is your thinking and your opinions, not anyone else's. Anytime we deal with other people in any situation, there will be conflict. 
we will never agree with someone 100% of the time. It's just not possible. And nor is it going to help you grow. But if your goal is to act honorably, with compassion and caring, and not just set out to change another person's mind, then you can win any argument. And that's this week's Stoic Coffee Break. Be good to yourself, be good to others, and thanks for listening.